Yes, Mr. Jonathan Nathan. Mission, BPC, with regards to ground two of the appeal, my lord. Um, the BPC asks that the court rejects the appeal by ECH on the grounds that the, the local public inquiry conducted by uh, Dr. Hawk did not suffer from procedural defects. My lord, the grounds of submission by counsel can be divided into two separate areas regarding the discretion employed by uh, Dr. Hawk to which my learned friend opposite has uh, alluded to. Uh, the first consideration, my lord, is the matter of discretion in uh, allowing the evidence from Dr. Eagle to be submitted in contravention with Section 3 of the Birds Act. Uh, the second ground of sub this, that would of course be the discussion of mandatory versus directory consideration. The second ground of uh, consideration, my lord, would also be Dr. Hawk's discretion to allow, uh, to not allow legal representation and to not allow cross-examination. The conclusion, my lord, will thus be to provide a summary of the analysis and the, uh, the points of law for your lordship's consideration. Yes. If it pleases your lordship, may I turn to my first submission. I'm grateful, my lord. The first matter which my learned friend argued is that Section 3 of the Birds Act was a mandatory order with regards to disclosure of evidence. My learned friend contended that since Dr. Hawk disregarded the mandatory provision of the Birds Act, he had, uh, he had essentially gone against the will of Parliament in creating, in creating an illegal process. Um, with that said, my lord, this is to the point where counsel must differ with my learned friends. Uh, while any, as a general rule, any procedure laid down by Parliament should be followed ideally, it does not follow that a failure to do so will necessarily invalidate the actions which are not taken, and much less so nullify the proceedings uh, and actions subsequently taken. It is necessary to the procedure in terms of whether it is mandatory or directory, having regard to the wider scheme uh, and the procedure's importance. What was the objective of the Birds Act, essentially? Regard, my lord, regard must be had to the particular statutory framework and what to determine what Parliament's intention was when construing the Birds Act. Yes. My Lord, it is clear from statutory framework and case, and case law within the history of administrative law that an inspector of a local public inquiry uh, of this kind enjoys considerable discretion in the way that proceedings are managed. And that includes matters like disclosure of evidence and the manner in which evidence is presented. Well, he didn't, have he didn't have the discretion to dispense with Section 3, did he? He did not, my lord. Uh, he did have the discretion as to how Section 3 should be applied with the objective of the act in mind. Mm -hmm. My lord, it must be noted, as it has not been mentioned towards your lordship yet, the overriding purpose of what the Birds Act constituted. The purpose of the Birds Act, as prescribed by Section 1, was to discern whether there was any substantial or serious threat to the bird population in the local area of Sussex. And acting on whether there was, in fact, a, a, uh, a substantial threat, then a compulsory purchase order would be necessary. Therefore, the process in which Dr. Hawk was acting, the local public inquiry in itself was a fact-finding, inquisitorial uh, process. It was not a court of law, my lord. To that degree, may I direct your lordship to yellow tab eight of the bundle? Yes. <clears throat> Specifically, my lord, page 266, this is the case of Bushel and another and Secretary of State for the Environment, 1981, mm -hmm. which was heard and reported in the appeal cases of the House of Lords, beginning at page 75. Is your lordship familiar with the facts of the case? Well, it's a motorway inquiry, isn't it? That is correct, my lord. My lordship, may I proceed to mm -hmm. the uh, help? If I may direct your lordship to the next page of the bundle on page 267. Mm -hmm. My lordship, 
for your convenience, the editor of the case report has summarized the held judgment. The summary is reflected in the main body of the judgments of their lords. I will be specifically referring to the summary judgment, beginning with the indicator A. It was held, allowing the appeal with Lord Edmund Davies dissenting, that in the absence of statutory rules as to the conduct of a local inquiry under the Act of 1959, the procedure to be followed was a matter of discretion for the Secretary of State and the inspector. The only requirement of the Act being that the procedure had to be fair to all concerned, including the general public and supporters of the scheme in question. My Lord, what was fair in, in uh, what was fair, including whether cross-examination of a witness should be allowed, would depend on the practical realities and the objectives of the Birds Act in itself. Well, it would. But what's fair about confronting <clears throat> the um, uh, present claimants with um, an account of destruction of birds' nests and eggs, which they've no notice of and can't meet? My Lord, it can be said that the... The purpose of the act, the, the purpose of the process was to identify to ECH whether they were aware or not. Uh, quite, quite frankly, it is operating within the public interest that my learned friends and ECH be brought towards such a threat if they are not already aware. That was the purpose of, ex of establishing concrete facts to see as to whether there was, in fact, a substantial threat of harm yes. to the bird population. Yes. But what's fair about providing, about springing new material on them that they've no idea is coming? That's the question. I'm grateful for the question, my lord. Within the, within the act of section three of the Birds Act, it is quite clear that there was no surprise to my learned friends throughout the ECH, throughout the process of the inquiry. The section three specifically states that 28 days prior to the inquiry, the BPC and any objectors shall disclose to each other the substance of the arguments on which they propose to rely on. Actually, the substance of the evidence. That is correct, my lord. Go it, on. it can be easily said that the substance of other evidence which was, pro which, was which was proposed forward to ECH, they were particularly aware. This was not going to be something that was completely of a blindsiding nature. They were quite aware of the position in that there were problems with the uh, encounters at the, at the Sussex Park, and it was simply a matter of new evidence that Dr. Eagle had found. And perhaps the justifications as to why that was not brought towards uh, ECH's degree within 28 days was that it was recent. Right. So the fact that they'd had other people, other, they'd had the rest of your expert evidence, which was on the long, you say along the same lines, do you? General threat to the bird population of this particular bit of Sussex. Yes, my Good lord. Enough. That is correct. That is correct, my lord, within section three's requirement of the substance. All right. Go on. My lord, supposing that the provision was a mandatory provision, if Dr. Hawk had followed the provision, the provision strictly in accordance with my learned friend's submissions and had excluded the recent evidence of Dr. Eagle since it had not been submitted within 28 days, mm -hmm. the result would be that the local public inquiry established would not be the most truthful since it would be missing recent evidence which, was, which would be determinative to a truthful recommendation. Yes, it would. It would exclude relevant evidence, you this, say. This but is correct, my what's lord. The, what's, what's, is it a question, is it a binary question of either let it in or refuse to let it in? Is there anything else that the um, chairman of the inquiry can do? The discretion of the chair is to consider the ultimate purpose of the act and the ultimate, perhaps the, the alternative resolutions which my learned friends and uh, could, could have done, uh, my lord, uh, would be to present writ, uh, legal, uh, excuse me, written representations uh, outside of the matter of the inquiry. Uh, it was the recommendation that is at the heart of the matter, and there were definitely alternative re, uh, options available to my learned friends. I suppose it might be said that <clears throat> if, the, if you find that a party is having something sprung on them, the obvious remedy is to give them time to consider it. My lord, I would agree with your lordship. Uh, as, I, as I would... Uh, Doesn't seem to have done that, does he? As I allude to the previous point of the substance, the, the matter of the evidence being new is another recurring feature right. which uh, my learned friends have already been accustomed to. All right. 
Therefore, my Lord, when balancing such considerations of whether to permit evidence or not, it must be said that Section 3 of the Birds Act was a directory consideration, which fell within Dr. Hawke's discretion as inspector of the inquiry to discern. Mm -hmm. It is therefore clear that Dr. Hawke's procedural considerations focused on a fact-finding process and establishing the truth of the matter. If it pleases your lordship, may I turn to my second submission? Go on. I'm grateful, my lord. Turning to the second matter of this ground, to what extent was English country holidays prejudiced by having their lawyer excluded from legal representation and the opportunity to not have cross and, the, and not having the opportunity to cross examination? Was it so prejudiced as to render the whole proceedings procedurally defective? My learned friends argue that the denial of legal representation and cross-examination rendered this entire procedure to be void and illegal. Yes, they did. However, my lord, I respectfully contend that the purpose of the inquiry was to allow each party an opportunity to establish the facts objectively. And that is inherent in the whole process of why the inquiry was formed, which was to give each of the parties, BPC and ECH, the opportunity to factually submit their uh, proposals. To this degree, my lord, it must be uh, discussed the nature of how the uh, local public inquiry would have been conducted. The nature in itself would comprise of individuals uh, being called who are expert witnesses, individuals similar to Dr. Eagle, both presented by BPC and ECH. The process of the procedure is that expert professionals are giving their view on the matters at hand and as to establish whether there is a substantial threat. Such uh, representations would not require to be done through a lawyer. It would be fairly easy for those witnesses to present on their own without having any, any problems, my lord. To this degree, may I direct your lordship to tab six on page 283 of the bundle. Top tab six, my lord, I must, my apologies. Are we still in bushel? That is correct, my lord. Yes. I will begin reading from the indicator M, the judgment of Lord Diplock. Beginning with the words, it would in my view. Mm -hmm. It would, in my view, be quite fallacious to suppose that an inquiry of this kind, the only fair way of ascertaining matters of fact and expert opinion, is by the oral testimony of witnesses who are subject to cross-examination on behalf of parties who disagree with what they have said. Such procedure is peculiar to litigation conducted in courts that follow the common law system of procedure. It plays no part in the procedure of courts of justice under legal systems based upon the civil law including the majority of our fellow member states of the European community. My Lord, Lord Diplock is directing us towards the distinction of what is a local public inquiry and what is a court of law. The procedures which my learned friends have argued are akin to a court of law, but that is not what this was. It was clear that the intention of Parliament was to conduct a process that was fact-finding. A court of law, my Lord, apportions blame and decides whether there is, how, however, a inquiry in itself is making a recommendation as to whether there is any blame to apportion at all. A, a vast contradiction there. Is it relevant what's at stake? It is, my lord. What's at stake in this kind of inquiry? There are two competing interests in themselves. The competing interests of ECH in having the proprietary interest to their land, and the alternative interest of the, uh, bird, the, the bird population, which is the public interest of the UK. So what's the effect of the, order, of the recommendation that's been made on ECH? The burden which would fall upon them is not one of which council would believe would be a great one. The matter in which would happen, my lord, is that uh, ECH would be relocated with the money from the compulsory purchase order, and it would be within their ability to find a, another convenient uh, uh, area with uh, location within the area of Sussex to not lose their clientele or market representation. So the value really lost to my learned friends is not something that can be mitigated, whereas the substantial interest of the bird population is one of which is potentially dying, my lord. So it's confiscation of their property, but with compensation. Which the comp would the compensation... Relocate, you say? 
Yes, the compensation, my lord, would be in, implied in the aspect of what the compulsory purchase is. It's compulsory is. purchase, yes. Yes, my lord. Yes, I see. My lordship, with re my lord, with regards to the matter of cross-examination, mm -hmm. if I may direct mm -hmm. your lordship to the indicator N on the same page of the bushel judgment from Lord Diplock, I will begin reading with the words, even in our own admiralty court. Yes. Even in our own admiralty court, it is not availed for the purpose of ascertaining expert opinion on questions of navigation. The judge acquires information about this by private inquiry from assessors who are not subject to cross-examination by the parties. So, refusal by an inspector to allow a party to cross-examine orally at a local inquiry, a person who has made statements of fact or has expressed expert opinions, is not unfair per se. My lord, by requesting to cross-examine in the instant case, ECH is actually suggesting to assume the role of what Dr. Hawk is, who is the individual of the local inquiry who interprets the facts of the case. The, the process in itself was simply allowing for ECH to submit their, their factual evidence, and the same was said for BPC. There wasn't a matter in itself of which cross-examination would be necessary. Otherwise, the validity of Dr. Hawk falls into question, as my learned senior has contended for. Well, I think what Ms. Brain suggested was that it, even if in, there may well be inquiries which you can conduct without cross-examination, if you're going to allow people to spring fresh material on, once on, on the other side and not offer them an adjournment to deal with it, the, the obvious other way of dealing with it is at least by enabling them to ask some questions about it. Gonna need some water for that. <laughs> I'm grateful, my lord. It can be said that, again, my lord, counsel will have to refer to the earlier submission with mm -hmm. regards to the substance and contend that my learned friends were not blindsided or taken aback. With regards to your lordship's submissions uh, concerning the uh, opportunity to cross ex to ask questions in itself, I must I must uh, add. I must adhere to my time constraints, my lord, and yes. consider my conclusions, if your lordship would. Yes, please. I'm grateful, my lord. There are two conflicting competing interests within the Birds Act in itself, my lord. The two competing interests are there in section one and section three. Section one of the Birds Act, it stipulates that the ultimate purpose and scope of the inquiry is to establish whether there is a substantial threat to the local bird population. In contravention to section one exists the limitations imposed, supposedly, by section three, in which it is contended by my learned friends opposite that such a consideration is mandatory. However, counsel asks that your lordship looks to substance and not to form. The substance of the act was to establish facts and this was accomplished. The authorities within, within administrative law are clear, my lord, that it is the subject matter and objective of the statute which must be achieved. And as my lord, as your my lordship, I have alluded to section one. It is section one that must triumph, which would render the section three uh, consideration of twenty eight days to be a directory consideration and one much well within the discretion of Dr. Hawk. If your lordship does not have any further inquiries. Anything else? Thank you very much indeed. I'm grateful, Mr. Nathan.